on, come and keep your shirt on. This is going to be great. Deborah and I are going to show you some of the great Australian countryside and at the same time teach you a little bit about your new Jeep. But before we go, there's a few things you should know, especially if you haven't owned a four-wheel drive before. The Cherokee is a specialised, multi-purpose vehicle. It can do things and go places that no two-wheel drive passenger car can. So before you start, take some time to read the owner's manual carefully, especially the sections on general maintenance and off-road driving. That way you'll get the best out of your Cherokee and the best out of the adventures you're going to have. So, let's go. That's the problem with owning a Cherokee. You never get to drive it. The thing I like about driving a Cherokee is its power and agility. And the power steering so light, parking's a cinch. It also has a great turning circle. In fact, better than any other four-wheel drive. The big four-litre fuel-injected six has plenty of acceleration. Towing trailers is a breeze for the Cherokee. Sitting up above the rest of the traffic is great for visibility. But the Cherokee isn't as high as some four-wheel drives, which is actually a good thing. For a start, you've got a lot better chance of getting into an underground car park than with, say, Pajero or Discovery. And because the Cherokee's centre of gravity is lower, that means handling on the open road is more like driving a conventional sedan. The Cherokee Limited comes standard with anti-skid brakes, or ABS for short. Now, with conventional braking systems, if the road's wet or slippery, emergency braking can be treacherous. With Cherokee's ABS system, electronic sensors on each wheel detect whether there's locking up or skidding. And then the ABS computer tells the relevant brake to intermittently apply and release pressure. This ensures the vehicle slowing down in a straight line and in the shortest possible distance. Hi. Hi. Fill her up, thanks. Thank you. This will be interesting. The Americans do things a bit differently to the norm. Like the petrol cap. You push it from this side, partner. Oh, thank you. The tank holds 76 litres of unleaded petrol, so for country driving, that gives you about 550 kilometres. Uh, depending upon the sort of roads you're driving on, uh, how much weight you're carrying, and whether or not you drive like Peter Brock. The warning light on the dash panel comes on when there's about seven litres left, so you've got about 50 k's to find the next service station. Can you pop the bonnet, please, honey? The bonnet catch is under the dash here. On the left side of the steering column are the usual multi-purpose controls. Indicators, high and low beam, flash to pass, and windscreen wiper and washer. The rear window wiper washer is down here, and the hazard warning light switch is beneath the ignition. On the Cherokee Limited, there's also a cruise control. Very easy to use. Simply flick the switch on, accelerate up to the desired cruising speed, push the engagement button. Apart from a slight variation on steep hills, the Cherokee will maintain this speed. Now, if you accelerate to pass another vehicle, you'll automatically revert to the preset cruising speed when you take your foot off the accelerator. But if you brake, the cruise control disengages completely. Now, there are a few other features of the cruise control, and they're covered in more detail in the owner's manual. Behind the multifunction stalk is the steering column tilt control. The heater and air conditioning controls are pretty self-explanatory, really. Temperature control, demist, heat and ventilation. Air conditioning in bi-level or normal modes uses fresh air from outside the vehicle. In maximum, it recirculates the interior air. The fan switch is just to the right, rotated up for high speed and down for low. This overhead console is standard for the Cherokee Limited. It houses reading lights for the front and rear seats. Very handy for map reading at night. But if you're out in the bush and off the roads altogether, it also has a digital compass and an outside temperature gauge. Smart, huh? Now, this clever little design feature is where you put your magic eye infrared control. So no more fumbling around in the dark trying to get the garage door open. Simply point the Cherokee in the direction of the garage, press this pad, 
and open sesame. Oh, yeah, and by the way, this is where you put your sunnies. Your turn to drive. Oh, you're all hard. Before you go on a long trip, it's a good idea to check the oil and the coolant levels. Yep. Okay. This is the engine oil dipstick, the transmission fluid, the engine coolant reservoir, the windscreen washer bottle, the radiator, and the power steering fluid. The Cherokee Limited has electronically adjusted seats. The controls are down here. The center joystick raises and lowers the driver's seat and moves it backwards and forwards. This toggle switch tilts the front of the seat up and down. The other raises and lowers the rear of the seat. The rake of the seat back is adjusted from here. That feels comfortable. The Cherokee also has electric mirrors. The controls are down here. To adjust them, flick the bottom switch in the direction of the mirror you wish to adjust and maneuver the mirror with the switch above. Check this out, this is cute. The vanity mirror illuminates when the cover's lifted. Great for those times when we go to the theatre, eh, darling? When was the last time you took me to the theatre? Well, I asked her to go to the football. Quite a good place to camp. Sure does. The Cherokee roof rack holds 68 kilos of luggage. The rails unlock easily by pressing this button and sliding backwards and forwards. It's important to remember that the rails themselves aren't load-bearing, so the idea is to support the load on the roof bearers and encapsulate the load fore and aft so it doesn't slide during transit. The tailgate design of the Cherokee is much better than most four-wheel drives. For a start, it's a single door with these gas struts, which make it much easier to open and hold it in position when it's up. It also keeps you dry when it's raining. Very handy. The other good thing about it is the manageable height of the load platform. It's a lot lower than most. And there are these two hooks where you can tie down any cargo to stop things rattling around. Oh. Thanks, Kim. Now, of course, the seat can be folded forward as in any station wagon. Pull these loops to lift the seat up and these handles to pull the seat back down. The seat can be taken out completely by pulling this handle down here. The tyre jack and the tyre lever under the seat here, but if you need to use them, check the owner's maintenance manual so you can find out where they need to be placed. Of course, the retractable load space cover hides any valuables you might have stored in the back. Haven't you got that tent up yet? If you stop gas bagging and come and help me, we might get it up a bit quicker. <laughs> Morning. Sleep well? Oh, like a log. Breakfast nearly ready. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm starving. Oh, nature has a wonderful way of awakening, doesn't it? Smells are sweeter. Colours are richer. Even food seems to taste better out in the bush. Mm. But when you leave the sealed road, be sure your sense of responsibility is turned on as well. Preserving our land is the highest priority of every off-road driver. 